All right, this video concerns the guillotiles, which were, which are a mechanism proposed by Peter Liu, where I'll, I'll link the relevant stuff in the description. It's a mechanism for explaining certain decorations, line decorations found in Islamic art that seem to be based on pentagonal, uh, decagonal, de decagonal geometries. And the idea, this proposal, is that these particular line decorations that we see here, which uh, you'll see ten-pointed stars, um, or uh, pentagons, or little kites that should be reminiscent of a Penrose tiling, uh, and, and other figures, these arise from just a small set of tiles, and those tiles could be a mechanism by which an architect or artisan could then, from these tiles, create various designs, and the workers could have templates or instructions on these tiles that are used to create very elaborate works. And uh, I won't try to repeat Peter Liu's presentation. It's very good. There are several of them available here on YouTube that I'll link below. So first of all, let's talk about uh, constructing these. And when I talk about these in class, I like to use a uh, an irregular, uh, an approximate pentag pentagonal um, construction. It's good enough for all practical purposes. So for the pentagon, I use... Durer's rusty compass construction. And then that leads me to the decagon via bisection. Now the other tiles here, they're all equilateral, but obviously their angles are not the same. Right? So these are all equilateral. And in fact, all five tiles have the same edge length. The edge length of all these tiles is the same. So what I thought I'd do is to show how one might go about constructing them, because they're easy to construct with a compass and straight edge. The point of these tiles is that the designs they make as a result of the line decoration they carry are very complicated and would take a lot of time to make with a compass and straight edge. But these particular decorations themselves are, are not bad, and certainly the tiles are not bad. So we'll do that now. The angles in the decagon are 144 degrees. The angles with the pentagon are 108. And so first, what are the angles in these other shapes? In the rhombus, we're looking at 72 there, and 108 here. And then in the uh, bow tie, or one of the irregular hexagons, you can see quite visually, this is a nice thing about having the physical tiles to show you, that the angle in the rhombus is the same as the acute angle here. So we know that's 72 degrees. And in fact, uh, you can see that it's a uh, the obtuse angle is not the obtuse angle in the rhombus. The obtuse angle on the bow tie is that of the decagon. So that's, well, the complement of. So it's 144 there. Uh, so <clears throat> whatever the difference is there, what, 360 minus 144 gives you 6, 1, 2, 216. So it's 216 on the inside. And then the... Um, other irregular hexagon, well, uh, again, you can see that one of the angles is the same as the decagon. So, this is 144, and uh, <clears throat> so won't those other ones. And the ends, what are the ends? Well, again, you can see that it's the same as the rhombus. And that makes a lot of sense. If you think about these tiles working together, as you combine them, you want these things to add up to one another. 
<clears throat> so a couple, a couple of these irregular hexagons <clears throat> form a 144 degree, degree angle. So they're going to match that of a decagon. So maybe you could use a, uh, a bow tie on the end there. Uh, what else? Well, the uh, the 108 and the um, and the uh, 72 that makes sense. It forms a straight line, so that's potentially handy. And of course, we have the two angles in the bow that the angle in the bow tie, the outside angle, is 144. So two of the rhombuses also fit in there. Now the pentagon. Well, if we take a couple of those 108 angles, what is that left? What, what, what is left then out of a full circle? Well, not surprisingly, 144. So there are lots of places, lots of ways in which these angles combine together to fit into one another <clears throat> because they're all based off the pentagon's angles. Make a pentagon, double the sides, get a decagon, and then chop these angles in half to get the other pieces. So, so let's look at um, the construction of the rhombus here as an example. So first of all, uh, I need to construct these angles, 72 and 108. As I said before, I'm going to use the uh, Albert Durer construction of encompass. The angle is not exactly 108, but then again, we're using physical pencils and we have plenty of physical error here. So it wouldn't be 108 anyway. So I, for Albert Durer, you start with uh, one side of the pentagon. It's a rusty compass construction. It is an equilateral construction. And then you would start making a pair of overlapping circles. And from here, we make a couple marks that allow us to start finding the other corners. So if I line up this point down here, or that recently constructed intersection, this gives me a point on the pentagon, and if I want to do the other one, that does too. But of course, we don't need to make a pentagon to get a 108 degree angle. We just need two sides of the pentagon. So here are two sides of the pentagon. So this angle right here is 108 degrees. So now I can use that angle. I can copy that angle to do, do with what I, what I want to. This rhombus has, also has a 72 degree angle in it. So the easiest way to get a 72 degree angle is going to be to make a decagon, or to make part of a decagon, and then to bisect an angle. So I have, I have two sides of my pentagon. If I go ahead and bisect those sides, I can find the center of where that pentagon would be. And uh, that will allow me to find the circle that contains it. For some of these things, that's, you know, sometimes it's nice to start with a circle. But we don't have one here. So here I've constructed the center of the circle containing, whoops, it's not contain, containing the pentagon that I'm not going to bother to finish because I don't need. I mean, you could continue the pentagon so that you can construct uh, this, this picture. Uh, if you will. And notice on the Pentagon that the, you know, the edge decorations, uh, some of them are convenient in the sense that it's from midpoint to vertex, these uh, stars. Not all of them, though. All right, so um, now I'll find a circle enclosing these points. Almost. Uh, maybe a bit more. It's pretty close. I don't even need a full circle. The circle, which is already bisected, just allows me to find two sides 
of a decagon which gives me this other angle. So this angle is 144 degrees. So now I have a 108 and a 104 and I already have an angle bisector for this uh, just set up nicely. So I have another color here. This angle is 72 degrees. So now I have all kinds of angles uh, that I can use. So maybe I'll do the next part in uh, part two. So the idea here is we know the angles that we need. They're all based off uh, pentagons uh, or decagons. And I've made, this is my work, if you will. Uh, from this work, I'll copy angles and uh, construct various shapes. All right.